Hey guys, Ellie here. Today, I have kind of a, a more bittersweet video, kind of like yesterday's video was. If you saw my video yesterday, then you saw that the new stray dog that we have, Bluey, unfortunately, isn't gonna be able to work out with us at the sanctuary, which really disappoints me because me and Meg were getting really attached to him. But long story short, we just felt that he was kind of becoming a dangerous presence for himself and for a lot of our other babies we have here. We have 150 plus animals that we care for here, and so many of them are fragile and delicate. And so Bluey just kind of was a little bit too excited and a little bit too playful with him. He had no malintent, but he's a stray dog, and that's common with them. At the same time, though, we wanted to find a place for him to be able to be given undivided attention, a place that specializes in dogs specifically. And so we found he could not be going to a better place you guys i assure you of that we took him to this place right here east texas hoof and paw animal rescue here's their page on the screen their facebook uh i'll put a link in the description as well so you can click on it give them a follow they have a like section they have a donation section as well because they're non-profit so they rely on donations to do their work and they truly do the most amazing work uh, they've rescued so many animals over the past few years, dogs, cats, horses, donkeys, pigs, you name it. And they find just amazing homes for them to go to if they don't keep them themselves. They transport them wherever they need to be transported to, to find good loving owners. Just an amazing, wonderful place. I cannot be more satisfied and more happy with where Bluey will be going forward. Wonderful. But um, I'm not going to lie, yesterday when me and Meg dropped Bluey off at the place, we were happy with where he was, but to ourselves, it just kind of, it felt different because normally we're the place where people come to, to to surrender their animal to us, to give them a forever home. We're the forever home usually. And so for us to know that he didn't work out with us and be surrendering him to a different place, kind of it reversed the roles quite a bit. And it really just, uh, it put things into perspective. It helped me empathize with other people like Meg's uncle who gave us Rooster, Amanda who gave us the Fainers, um, the lady who gave us Angel, just different people who've had to surrender their animals to us. We kind of knew what it felt like to be in their shoes for the first time. And so it was different, but like I said, Bluey is going to have a great journey. You guys will be able to follow his journey. If you check out East Texas Hoof and Paw Animal Rescue, hopefully they'll put plenty of content of him on there. And you know, without further ado, let me show you guys their place. Let me let the owner herself explain to you guys exactly what it is they do and what their mission is. All right, guys, so we're here. Blue is exploring right now. We are at East Texas Hoof and Paw Animal Rescue. Did I get that right? Yeah, you did. This is the owner, okay. Allison. Yep. How are you? Good. Just a little sweaty. Been doing some chores, it's cleaning, a... still some hurricane cleanup. Yeah, y'all were hit by the hurricane too, yeah. huh? It's okay. it's okay. Our viewers know that sweat indicates hard work, so they're not going to think anything of it. Now, I want to give you the chance to tell me what exactly it is y'all do, what your, I don't know what you call it, mission statement is or whatever. This is your chance to sell, you, sell yourself doesn't sound right. But this is your chance to tell everybody exactly yeah. what you want them to know about you. So, um, my name's Allison. We moved down here about two and a half years ago from Iowa. Um, quite a culture change, all the weather, I everything, yeah. everything. Um, had no idea about the pet crisis that we're in down here, I guess you could mm -hmm. say, overpopulation. Um, never seen this many kind of stray animals, especially dogs, mm -hmm. um, up north before coming down here. Um, so about two months into living here, uh, I picked up my first stray and brought it home and didn't know what I was doing. And it just kind of went from there, picked up another couple dogs. And then I was like, this I'm is just it. <laughs> gonna start a rescue, I guess. And um, it quickly grew. Um, July of 2022, we made our first transport up to Iowa with just six dogs. Oh, wow. Um, so y'all transport a lot at a time. Um, yeah, every month we go from here to Iowa, where I'm from. I've built a foster base up there. We have fosters here too. I kind of have the overflow of what we can't find fosters mm -hmm. for. And um, so we have fosters down in Houston, in Cleveland, um, Conroe, and then all over up in Iowa too. And so right now our rescue has about 115 animals between all of our foster homes and here. Um, and then hence the name Hoof and Paw, we have uh, a couple horses out there that are rescues that came to us from either the couple different uh, sheriffs in Montgomery oh, County. Really? And here we've gotten a couple of pigs from the pound oh, here. Wow. Um, and then obviously 
a lot of our rescues have happened down where y'all are living in mm -hmm. Colony Ridge, um, where there's, you know, there's, I mean, all of Texas, there's not really any laws that are withheld as far as spay and neuter and, um, yeah, I um, I've, I talked about it in one of my other videos. It's funny you say that. I guess it really is true that different times my family and I have traveled up north and even west to other states and whatnot. There's like the environment super clean and there's no stray animals, not one roadkill right. in, a, in a week vacation or whatever. Yeah. And on a single 10 minute car ride, you'll come across three ran over animals or like eight strays or whatever. And so it's just sad. I don't know how the stray animal crisis got so out of control down here. I don't know. Um, I wish there was a way we could make some change, but for now we just do what we can. We pick up the ones we can yeah. help and the ones we mm. have fosters for mm. and get them the vet mm. care they need. Mm. Um, which, you know, we're, we're a 501, a nonprofit, so we rely strictly off donations to do the work we do and get the animals fixed and treat heartworms if they have that, get their vaccines, get them spayed and neutered. And then um, we've adopted a few locally around here, but we do transport mostly up north just because there's so many dogs here already. Um, I, yeah, that, that's what I said in my last yeah. video too, because you had texted me about it and whatnot. Yeah. But you guys, you look around and stuff like that. They have a beautiful property. Well, they um, they truly do God's work over here, taking good care of the animals, finding them good homes. There isn't anyone better. They couldn't. They couldn't. We couldn't have found a better place for Sweet Bluey. Part of it is, you know, just it's bittersweet because I hate that it didn't work out for us. This is our first. This is the first time we've been the surrenderers, if you will. We're usually the ones who rescue, but I know that. That he's that he's gonna be at a great place. Yeah, for sure. There's and like I said, I jokingly kind of messaged you that there's got to be some backwoods person in, in Wisconsin or Iowa or whatever that uh, somebody will love him. Some, Those blue eyes are beautiful. Some right? somebody so, needs him absolutely. Yeah, come here. Hey, Bluey. He's too busy looking around. There's all kinds of stuff to smell. There's some interesting behaviors there. <laughs> he's not bad. We've had we've seen much worse dogs. Yeah. Much he's not he's not a feral, not a bloodlusty yeah. creature or anything. He just um. He needs work that we he, he just, yeah, he just, we have, we have 150 plus animals of so many different varieties. Yeah. I think we have eight to 10 different species and stuff like that. So it's just hard to give the one-on-one -on -one time to him solely that he needs and whatnot. And so I know y'all are primarily dogs. Living and down there. I mean, aside from him, like, have you had dogs show up at your property often? No. Well, we, um, it's a funny story I've actually. Been one time I think with, with your dad. Yeah. Hold that on. that would have been a long. The two black dogs? Yes. Y'all got Charlie and she Echo? Got Char okay. yeah. Really? They didn't work out with us either. They they got a hold of chickens. Uh huh. So yeah. they did. Okay, that makes it, sense. Um, oh, comfortable here. Well, the, the prop. <laughs> oh lord. Yeah, oh gosh, Bluey. <laughs> He's comfortable. Fertilize the ground, buddy. Yeah, we um, we've added a lot of gates to our property. What we've yeah. kind of and so we make sure that nothing can get in or get out and whatnot mm -hmm. but it was funny uh, i let my cousin borrow our pasture for something and then i told her i'd close one of the gates but then i i got busy and i forgot yeah. and in just a small little period of time he found his way in like it wasn't and it was from the it was from like the wilderness or whatever it, it wasn't even it wasn't even a, it wasn't even a gate leading to the road it was like a gate leading to the woods or whatever and so yeah. somehow that's all it took so it's even more confusing that such a good well-behaved dog came from the wilderness side Unless he went like all the way around or something. It was weird. It was really weird. All I know is that when we got home and we found him, we were like, oh, did you get in by accident? So we tried to let the gate open to see what he would do. And he just conjoined to our hip, would not leave our side. So that's why we felt so compelled to give him a shot. It sure is pretty. He's gorgeous. <laughs> but yeah, we do best with like a very mild, we have two great Pyrenees and they're, uh -huh. they're perfect for us because we're so calm and mild mannered and Pyrenees are in general. Mm -hmm. And so more high energy jogs have been hard for us yeah. and for our, for our chickens, for our cats, cause mm -hmm. cat chasers. And then I hate, I just breaks my heart that we lost a bunny, Yeah. but, um, he needs, he needs somebody that can give him that time, maybe one or two other dogs, but yeah. he needs, definitely, he needs to be the star of the show. Cause I think we noticed that whenever we would start to, you know, you have over a hundred animals. You have to delegate your time, you know? And I would go in to give goats medicine or he would start feeding goats and he would get aggressive at the gate. Mm -hmm. But you can't, cause he can't go in there because he herds them aggressively. It's, yeah. it's too much. Right. And so I think we started to notice the bad behaviors as he got comfortable. Yeah, sure. And as he got jealous. Right. Yeah, he got in a fight with our big old Pyrenees adult, and he actually won. <laughs> the Pyrenees is way bigger than him. He pinned him down. He cut him a little bit and stuff to get food, and so yeah. it was just food aggression. Like I said, he he has a good heart. I know it. Oh yeah, a lot but of the dogs just, that we've picked up from mm -hmm. down there in Cleveland have mm -hmm. food aggression because they never know when they're going to eat again. Exactly. Yeah, so. that that's probably part of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
has most. potential. Like you see him now, he's not being bad. He's not a bad dog. He has bad habits and bad behaviors. Yes. And he just needs that person that can give that to him. So I appreciate y'all reaching yeah. out. We, re like, we really do. That I can't yeah. be the one <laughs> for him. Like I'm really having like a personal, like mm -hmm. internal struggle because like we are mm -hmm. rescued. Yeah. And then, we're normally the final spot. Right. And so it's hard being the starting spot, even though I'm a part of his journey. For me, mm -hmm. that's just like, but I'm final mm -hmm. yeah. and I'm not for him. And it's really hard. It's really hard. Yeah, totally get that. And yeah. we'll definitely keep you guys updated between our Facebooks yeah. and whatnot. Uh -huh. And I'm when excited. we find him a place, we'll definitely um, let you know where he goes. And I'm excited. I think yeah, this is, um, and you never oh, know. Snow, I bet you. you never know. Somebody watching right now could end up being the adopter. For all we know, y'all have a. Can you tell me about your uh, application process and whatnot? Yeah, so we have a, a lengthy application they have to fill out online. It just kind of asks, you know, about their current pets, if they've had any pets in the past, where they're going to keep the dog. It's to ensure that um, they make sure to go yeah, they go to a good uh, place. But they have a vet lined up, and we have to um, contact references their landlord if they're a renter. Oh, awesome. um, all these things we have to do. Also, a home check. Um, awesome. We do virtually for those most of the time. Otherwise, I'll have one of my. If it's in Iowa, sometimes our volunteers will go do in-home checks and stuff. And then we do meet and greets. They meet the dog before they officially adopt, uh, usually. Sometimes we get pre-adoptions. They're all listed on Pet Finder, which is a... Love um, Pet Finder. Uh, you know, if it's you know great. what it is. Yeah. It's great. So it's great. you can really list is. any dog, animal on there. Like, you can list a snake mm -hmm. on there. Yeah, I mean, we've anything. Never, but, um, so we list all of our animals on there once they're ready for adoption and had all their vet care. And then um, from that point, somebody will find our application. They'll fill that out. And then since we do transport monthly, we'll get pre-adoptions. So some people adopt without even seeing them in person. Um, and we've had very good luck in the off chance. You know, we've had a handful of returns, oh, you know, but we've taken over 500 dogs and cats um, in the last two years up north. And, you wow. know, maybe, maybe 10 times things haven't worked out and we take them back and find them a, a better home the next time. Um, so they always do... So you know, come back if things don't work out. Um, and then, yeah, we hold, we hold adoption events up there too. So, <laughs> oh, it's here yeah. go. Oh, I a... love him so much. He's so, he's so loyal. He is a good boy. I know, oh, I know he's going to find a good place. <laughs> yeah. I know it's going to be good for him. Yeah. Yeah, so we also work with a trainer that. Um, he's based just about 10, 15 minutes from Livingston. Oh, awesome. And so if we need anything, we reach out to him. He actually has a dog for us right now that we pulled off the euthanasia list. Oh, and that's And she was very, very, very want to kill any other four-legged animal yeah. with fur. Um, and so he's trying to work her through that. It's called Board and Train. So mm -hmm. she's been with him for almost two months now and um, making a big difference in her. So when we have things that I can't handle, because I'm no professional either, but I feel like I can read a dog pretty well and... So we'll slowly, after he's neutered, integrate him with a, you know, a couple dogs, see how he does, and then work our way up to other things. And if and if he can only exist with dogs, that's fine. We'll find him a home that doesn't have little animals. And so, yeah. That's wonderful. But yeah, guys, in general, if you want to follow Bluey's journey here and beyond, or if you just want another good, wholesome animal page to follow, East Texas Hoof and Paw Animal Rescue, right? Yes. That's it? Yep. That's it. All right, guys. I'm about to wrap this video up. Any last words you'd like to share before I end it? No, I just want to thank you for bringing him up here. Oh, we thank y'all for reaching out. Oh, of course. Together and, you know, maybe this won't be the last dog we save together. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Not. Yeah, maybe not. <laughs> I, I, hope, I hope we can see a day where, I hate to say it, but where we don't need rescues and we don't oh, need I these. Know. Like, you love your job, but then it's like, man, I wish my job didn't exist. It didn't, right. didn't like, have to yeah. exist. I really wish it didn't yeah. exist but it's just the reality of when you have no laws right. for over animal control. So yeah, definitely. Reality. Oh my gosh, guys, this is terrible of me to say, but I'm already tempted to get one of these puppies they have. I know we're surrendering a dog right now. I can't do it. We have two good dogs at home and they already all have homes lined up, right? Yes. They do. Uh, these is, this is a Pyrenees and Husky mix, these babies are? Yes, they came from uh, Houston, a family, you know, couldn't contain them. I love Didn't you. have the parents fixed, and um, so sad. Oh my goodness, those are I sweet little puppies. One. They're adorable. <laughs> they sure are cute. I gotta show y'all this pig that they have. This is the coolest looking <laughs> pig ever. If 
They got little goats right here. Hi, sweet goaties. They make really big areas for them to be able to hang out in. This one looks like Hero. This one, in, this is just like Hero right here. I love this one right here in the front. That's Daisy and Minnie. And then the baby is Belle. Daisy and Minnie and then Belle right there. Oh my goodness, he was a good goatee. Y'all are a little timid, aren't wow. you? Wow. So they are. And I don't know. I mean, kids begging for goats them. and they were rescues. Their feet were awful. We've got mm -hmm. a gal out here to trim them once and yeah. it's a work in progress. But yeah. We got Bluey yeah. right here. Yeah. Doing some They're very food motivated. leash, doing yeah. some leash and collar training with old Bluey. Man, I hope that pig comes out again. Oh, he will. I love that little pig. I should have videoed it the first time <laughs> to get my reaction, but the kids named this... him Nosy, and then we got Big Mama in there. She was <laughs> nosy. A nap. Piggy piggies! Come on, little piggy. piggy. piggy, piggy. Show the audience your funny little shape. Guys, look at this pig right here. This is the coolest pig I've ever seen in my life. Oh my goodness! How much for these two? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at his God. shape. He's like six, he's like he's like a he's so lean on his torso, but then he has that long snout like a hog. Oh, that's so wonderful. This is the mama right here? I don't know if they're really related. They were at the pound together, believe it or not. I never knew a pig would be at the pound. You got but... them at the pound? Oh my gosh, that's awful. <laughs> but it's wonderful y'all were able to rescue them. Man, oh man. Come here, are you hungry? That one is so, so sweet in the yeah. back. <laughs> oh my goodness, I love this. Little cup? <laughs> his little spots and his shape is so funny. What's his name again? Nosy? Nosy. That's Nosy right there? Yep. Oh, I can't get enough of that pig right there. Oh my goodness, Nosy. <laughs> Look at this pig, you guys. It's crazy. Oh my goodness. His mannerisms, just everything. He's hilarious, really. Oh. <laughs> Look at him. Come here, let's go. Mr. Piggles isn't like that. No. Piggles just steals cat food. Oh, really? Yep. Wow. These guys, uh, have you ever gave your pigs marshmallows? No, I haven't. They love them. Really? Yes. Here come the here come the horses. Oh, oh my goodness. They got horses. Oh, they got some, some donkeys over there, all kinds of stuff. So that's a sweet looking donkey to that white one. I love that donkey. <laughs> that is my dream donkey color. Just saying. Look at your shirt, lovey. Who's afraid of little old me? You should be. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, I hope y'all enjoyed. Y'all let me know in the comments what kind of stuff you guys want to see. I hope you all have an incredibly blessed rest of your day. And as I always say, your boy Ellie out.